Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and this time it is going to be on Crusadia Guard Dragons, which honestly is probably hands down my favorite deck to pilot of the current format. I've been playtesting this deck a lot, whether it's on stream or off stream in my own personal time, and I've been having an insanely good time piloting and putting theory into this deck and crafting it into what you're about to see. But so, what I'm about to show you is my personal list. If I were going to be entering an event tomorrow, I would be playing this exact list. Maybe one card changed, depending on if I could get Snake Charmed into making it like a last second decision. Uh, but basically, I find this deck to be incredibly competitive. Uh, it has a lot of untapped potential uh, in the right hands. The deck can do very well, and it's actually a pretty affordable deck in like the essence of the entirety of the deck that you could buy you could bu get this deck between 120 to like 180 dollars like it's actually a relatively budget deck when you start like removing things like hand traps and when you start uh when you start like removing like high rarity versions of cards out and start going for you know some more budget available options the most expensive card in the deck core is saryuja skull dread um, which is, you know, if you get those, the rest of the deck is actually pretty cheap. So it's a deck that doesn't involve danger use and all that sort of stuff. So I have a lot of good things to say about this deck. But anyway, if you're interested in catching any of my live streams when they happen, the aforementioned live streams where I test decks and stuff, link is in the description to my Twitch page. If you want to go follow that and enable notifications, get notified next time I go live. As well as there's a link in the description to my channel's Discord server. If you're interested in joining that and chatting with me and other people on a daily basis about Yu-Gi-Oh! and other various stuff, and also, if you're new here and you're enjoying the content, I'd implore you to subscribe. Maybe like the video. Uh, it would help out a lot. And it would let me know what you guys are thinking. And let me know in the comments down below what you think about this deck as well. But anyway, deck list is 40 cards. Starting out with three copies of Crusadia Draco. This is the most important Crusadia. It's the reason we're playing this deck, because it's a searchable dragon that is level 4 or lower to go into the guard dragon stuff. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Crusadia guard dragon versus the just regular Crusadia strategy, Crusadia historically is a deck that went second and tried to just punch your opponent with big Equimaxes that are pumped up by Maximus and Leonis. Uh, this deck is very, very different. This deck goes first and tries to be very consistent at putting out multiple disruption boards by digging into cards with multiple Saryujas, going through the Guard Dragon playline, uh, and you know just gathering resources that way. So, Draco, super important. But then three copies of Crusadia Maximus. Uh, this guy's effect doesn't come up that often, but it does when you're going for big OTK pushes. Uh, it's literally just to be a name, because Crusadia names are super important in this deck. Three copies of Crusadia Arborea. This one is actually important because it's a tuner. Um, its protection effect does come up sometimes, uh, but the main thing you want this for is you want this to be a tuner to go into your non dragster play. So definitely play three of that. Three copies of Crusadia Leonis. Uh, this is our only rescue cat target in the deck, but uh, it actually just works out super well that way anyway, which I'll explain later when we get to that card. Uh, but this card's effect barely comes up. Uh, sometimes it comes up like if you're like <laughs> just trying to get over something, but usually you had game when you were using that effect anyway. And now the card I really like is uh, Crusadia Reclusia. I really like the fact that uh, this card like makes your Salaman great matchup really easy because that deck isn't really that impressive to me. And like all it does turn one usually is like does the link play and then sets up a roar or a rage. And usually you know exactly which one that is, so you're able to just go Magius and you're able to go ping the Reclesia down, and then pop a card, um, and then if it was the Roar, you're just instantly just baiting the Roar. The Rage is a bit of a bigger problem to deal with, um, but like most people are just setting Roar, and Reclusia just pings off that. Uh, but then the last card that could be considered part of the Crusadia lineup is World Legacy World Crown. This card is like the honorary 16th Crusadia. I'm not playing any multiples of it because it does not work with itself, whereas if you were to open any Crusadia name plus World Crown, that's at least the full first half of the combo to go through the Guard Dragon play, the first steps of the Guard Dragon play, and make a Saryuja to try and dig for more resources and get, you know, the rest of the way to the play. But if you had double World Crown, that does not work as a play. But this card operates like a Crusadia with the rest of the Crusadia, so it's worth playing. Uh, and it's a card that you can draw and, like, either open or draw, and it's a card that you can keep on the field because it has an effect to tribute itself to negate an extra deck monster's effect. Uh, which does come up quite often if you are sticking the card on the field. So it's a Crusadia that actually, it's like an honorary Crusadia name that actually does things um, if you put it into your ending board. So that's actually kind of neat. Um, but the only card you, I could be playing like instead of this to like keep my Crusadia count at the absolute maximum would be like to like replace this card with Reinforcement of the Army just to be another copy of Arborea. But I feel like this card has come like comes up a lot more in uh, 
in uh, the situations where it would be good versus just having another copy of Arborea. But anyway, three copies of Rescue Cat. If you are playing this deck, you should definitely be playing this card. I was testing this deck without this card in it, and I was pretty sold that this card was not needed until I put it in and actually tested it. Like, the logic for not playing it is that it's weak to hand traps, but the entire deck, when you actually break it down, is already weak to hand traps anyway. Like, if you open two Crusadias, you're going to lose to Ash or Impermanence just as much as you were going to lose to Rescue Cat if you don't have a, like, measure to play around it anyway. Um, but this card is, just, is like a higher risk card, but it's super high reward. I wouldn't even say it's a higher risk card even, because like like I just outlined, your deck will lose to those cards anyway. You'll get Impermanence on Spatha, and you can't move your LP, and then that'll be, a, that'll be a problem. You'll get your LP ashed, and like your turn will probably end unless you have the perfect extender. Rescue Cat is sort of like that as well. However, your extenders can be a little bit more open-ended, but... Uh, but with Rescue Cat, like, even if you're not playing the tuner, which I'm not playing the uh, level 2 tuner or Naturia Beast in my main deck, I would definitely side those for the matchups you do end up playing at spell-heavy decks. Uh, but it's just not needed uh, in the main deck, especially since uh, Sky Striker is not super well represented, especially with Salamangrates just coming out. And, like, danger decks are obviously just not hit by uh, Naturia Beast that often um, that much either, because, like, they just play Sekka's Light. It's, like, their only spell, usually. Uh, but Rescue Cat works with every single extender super well. By itself, it gets you through the first stage to get you to the first Saryuja and the first, uh, half of the Guard Dragon play. Um, but then Rescue Cat plus Crusadia is the entire play going completely through the Guard Dragon play and into your two different Saryujas, um, which cannot be understated. Like, Rescue Cat plus Crusadia is an insane play. It gets you everywhere you need to be. Uh, and then, uh, like, you, it also just works with all your extenders as well. Like, Rescue Cat works with Black Dragon, White Dragon, all that, because of how far one Rescue Cat gets you into the combo. It gets you all the way to the point where you've made your first Saryuja, and that means that your White and Black Dragons are live, all your Reborn cards are live. Like, it works with every single extender. And we're only playing Leonis as the targets for this card, uh, which is actually just completely fine. You may think to yourself, what if you open Cat plus two Leonis? One, that's statistically not very likely, but two, if that happens, cool, I opened two Leonis. You know what that means? That means I'm going into the Saryuja play anyway, one of those Leonis is going to get added back to my hand off Draco, and that means the first Saryuja I make is going to shuffle that Leonis back into my deck, which means that I could, in theory, special rescue Cat and tribute it and get two Leonises from my deck, because only one will still be in the grave, and then two will be back in deck. So, cool. I open Rescue Cat and two Leonises? Cool. I open combo anyway. <laughs> so, like, it doesn't matter if you, like, draw the targets for this. But I would definitely side the uh, the level 2 t Earth Tuner and that Beast for, like, more spell-heavy matchups. But like I said, they're just not in my main deck. But onto the Dragon portion of this deck, the more Dragon-focused engine. Uh, three copies of Black Dragon Collapse Serpent, two copies of White Dragon Wyvern Burster, and the Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon that you're abusing off the Guard Dragon plays. These are super, super well, like, rounded extenders for this deck. You want these cards in almost every hand uh, after you've resolved your first Saryuja. Uh, this is a 40 card list, but I've been playing 41 card and 42 card lists in the past that played three copies of Wyvern Burster. I do not agree with the people that are playing three and one because you always want to be able to get the search, no matter which one you start with. So if you start with white and then go into black, um, then you don't want to be able to, you don't want to be stuck in a position where you can't use black to search another card, because you're usually doing that at the point where you're making Saryujas, and you want to be able to draw cards and put back the ones of these that are already used back into your deck. And so if you have the ability to search one of them as chain link two to your Saryuja, that means you have an additional card in your hand that's doing nothing, which means you can put back an additional card that was in your hand, meaning your Saryuja gets bigger value because you're able to keep more cards that it drew you. So I've heavily considered going back to a 41 card list, playing three Wyvern Burster, uh, but like it, I think the list is fine as it is currently. Um, if I were to go to a 41 card list, my 41, my 41st card would be a third Wyvern Burster, and if I were to go to 42 cards, it would be, uh, like another hand trap. Uh, but speaking of, uh, I play four hand traps, I play two copies of Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, and two copies of Droll and Lockbird. Um, these are just kind of concessions to going second, they're not super, super high impact, um, in the format, uh, but they just, like, seem to be the most well-rounded. Droll and Lock is, like, the, probably the best one, it's, like, the hand trap of the format. Uh, but also, these cards are decent enough going first anyway, because this deck focuses on two-card combos as your starting plays, and then using an extender off of a Saryuja that gets you the rest of the way. You're trying to draw into as many cards as possible to either make a board, 
or just have cards that uh, disrupt your opponent's next turn. And so I don't think I would ever keep Ash Blossoms unless my draws were just weak enough to where it was the best choice. Um, but, like, you want to draw into cards like, you know, Monsters to make Dawn Dragster, Waterfront to go into Gamma Seal, um, or you could just draw into cards like Call by the Grave and Ash Blossoms, but if you draw into Droll and Lock Bird, you almost always keep this thing, because it doesn't matter what deck they're playing, usually Droll and Lock makes their turns really awkward, which means that no matter how many disruptions slash negations you have, they usually end up being super impactful, because you give them additional value, especially in danger matchups, which, if you don't have Gamma Seal, uh, on board, like, the danger matchups, like Danger Thunder Dragon and Danger Orcus become really hard, Whereas if you drew into a drone lock bird, that's almost better than drawing into Gamma Seal because Gamma Seal outs those cards super well, but drone lock preventing them from drawing cards and searching with Nessie and stuff um, actually matters as well because it makes your other cards on field uh, more relevant, even if you don't have Gamma Seal. But speaking of Gamma Seal, Gamma Seal the Sea Turtle Kaiju. We're playing it because we're playing the Waterfront Package. This is the last monster in the deck. It's the 30th monster. And then uh, for the first three of the nine spells, playing the Waterfront Package to go with this Gamma Seal. Uh, playing two Waterfront and one Terraforming because this ratio is just correct if you're if you're playing uh, field spells that you don't want to actually have multiples of. If you are playing just three Kyoto Waterfronts, it'd look really good on a deck list. You know, just three Waterfronts. Ooh, nice, juicy, smooth playlist. Uh, not playlist, play set. But... If you were, uh, if you're actually trying to like minimize variance, uh, you want to play the terraforming instead of the third uh, waterfront because you're going to play the terraforming whenever you draw it, which means it's essentially waterfront anyway. But if you drew into the terraforming, that means that you have one less waterfront in your deck, which means your Saryuja draws in the future of those turns are inherently better uh, because it means that you have less cards in your deck that are duplicates of what you already have. And you are going to be drawing into more impactful cards that you could keep, like Droll and Lockbird, uh, Monster Reborns, White and Black Dragons, stuff like that. And if you have a lot of duplicate cards you want to put back, um, that you have a lot of duplicates of in your hand off Saryuja, you definitely want to be minimizing your variance of having multiple just hard water fronts in your deck to draw into. So, the terraforming just makes sense here, and so that is why... I play it, and if you want to make the argument of this card loses the Droll, I mean, so does this one, so it wouldn't make any difference if it was Waterfront anyway, because by the time you're resolving Waterfront, you have passed a couple of points where you are getting either Ashed or Drolled, and if they use either of those cards, then you're probably going to be in a tough spot anyway, so the terraforming didn't matter anyway, but so, three Reborn cards, one copy of Monster Reborn, two copies of World Legacy Succession. Uh, this card is searchable off Crusadia Crawler, so I wanted another copy of it in case uh, you open one. It's also just like a decent extender, um, but I'm not playing World Legacy Guard Dragon because I think that card sucks. I've tested it a lot. It only interacts with Draco, which is pretty unfortunate for this deck. Um, and so, like, like if you open World Legacy Guard Dragon and you have to use uh, a Reborn spell to make your play live, um, like, for example, if you open, like, a Crusadia that's not Draco... And World Legacy Guard Dragon, and that's, those are the only combo cards in your hand that are like combo cards or extenders. That's not a play. Whereas if you open any Crusadia plus Succession, it's not optimal to use your Succession that early, but it does at least get you through the first half of the Guard Dragon play and into your first Saryuja to try to dig for more cards. So this is like another Crusadia card in essence, in that it's like a combo play, as well as like a Monster Reborn. Like all three of these cards can just make your plays start versus just being purely extenders. Um, so, like, World Legacy Guard Dragon just doesn't do that. It literally only interacts with Draco, and its moving effect never comes up. Uh, so I just decided not to play it. Whereas, like, Succession is the card I'm always searching off Crusadia Crawler anyway, uh, when it summons itself to make my Equimax into a super, super good negation. Uh, and so uh, I just want to have the potential to draw into Succession, activate it, and then search a second copy of it. But anyway... Last three spells, three Called by the Graves. Respect hand traps. You kind of have to. If you have Called by the Grave, you just start playing real ignorantly until they impermanence you. But hey, man, you, sometimes you just get got. Uh, but then the last card in the deck, the 40th card, is the one trap, Crusadia Crawler. Um, some people don't play this. I prefer to play it. Again, it's another like higher risk, higher reward card. Um, if you're just like doing an Equimax and then leaving a Crusadia under it that is not like a card like Crawler, uh, you're just throwing extra cards into the board that could be melted into other resources. Whereas, stepping up into Equimax, naturally, you're able to search this card off of uh, Regulix, which means that you're able to dedicate your other cards into more things like Dawn Dragsters and stuff like that. So, 
uh, being able to search this and get value out of the Regulix is like really good to me because then you can just flip it, it summons itself, and then it searches World Legacy Succession for you, which is a good follow-up card for the next turn. But then it also means that like if you're even if your Equimax doesn't negate anything, this card already got insane value for you, and then it just gets super duper good value if your Equimax actually gets to negate something. But that is the main deck, the 40 card main. For the extra deck, I play two copies of Crusadia Maximus, uh, or Magius, because it does come up with the Rescue Cat sometimes. You make a Magius and then make Magius under it to get the uh, first Magius to trigger. Um, that's what turns Rescue Cat into a one card, uh, like, first half of the combo sequence. Uh, but then you have the Regulix, the Spatha, and the Equimax. Um, I do really like the Equimax because it is the negation, but then it also just makes it really easy to do really big pushes uh, the following turn. Uh, but then for the Guard Dragon Engine, one LP, one Pisty, and one Agrapan. Uh, a second Pisty does come up from time to time, but I've yet to find a reason to remove anything else from the extra deck to uh, accommodate it. Specifically since, like, because I'm playing Crawler, uh, I get to you usually succession for Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon, which is what Pisty would come up for um, usually. But, like, Pisty only comes up in a second card. A second quantity of Pisty only comes up during grind games, is what I'm trying to say. Whereas, usually, if you're smart, you can handle that better anyway. But then the last links are two Suryujas, one Nightmare Phoenix, and one Borolo Dragon. Since I'm playing the Equimax package, um, and like Equimax gets big and pushes, um, I haven't found myself needing Boral Sword. I found myself needing Boral Load a lot more often, um, so that's why I'm, I am playing the Boral Load. Uh, like, it outs certain cards that Boral Sword just wouldn't. Um like my opponent's own Boral Swords, uh, which sometimes had a problem. Sometimes I had a problem dealing with, but uh, you don't need the Boral Sword if you're playing the Equimax because Equimax just gets beefy by himself anyway. Uh, and then I'm also playing uh, Crystal Wing instead of uh, Hot Red Dragon Abyss. One because it's better against the Danger decks uh, because like Hot Red Dragon Abyss only negates face-up cards on field, whereas this negates monster effects anywhere. It's a little bit more narrow of a scope of what it negates, but it's a bigger scope of where it negates, and that comes up. Um, especially since I'm usually ending on an Equimax and a Dawn Dragster anyway. Uh, so, like, Equimax is already a face-up card on a Field Negator, and this is a Spell or Trap Negator. Uh, so, like, this usually negates the first Spell or Trap that gets played, and then you have Equimax plus Crystal Wing that can negate a monster and then either another monster or a Spell and Trap. Uh, but, so, like, this is just better against Danger decks, which is why I play it. But also, against certain matchups, it just gets huge. You just, like, swing this into your opponent's Thunder Dragon Colossuses that are in attack mode, and it just, it's 3,000. Like, you just gain the 28, and you're just like, boom. Uh, so, like, it, it, it's one of those things that just, it makes it to where Boral Sword just doesn't come up that often. Uh, but then the last Synchro is just another Agrapane target, and Naturia Barkeon. Um, you could side deck this card, but it being in the main extra deck uh, just makes it to where, like, game ones you can just get people with it. Especially if you are at a big event and you know your opponent that you're going first against is like playing a trap deck. Like, you want to be rewarded for knowing that information. And summoning Barkeon alongside your Dawn Dragster and, uh, and Equimax is just like the way to get rewarded for that. But so, that is the entire deck list. I'm not going to show you a side deck because side decks for me are very fluid and they typically change. Uh, but what I will say is that, uh, like, side the level 2 tuner for the Rescue Cat package alongside Naturia Beast for the matchups where it's relevant. And then you could probably just side more cards to make the Waterfront package good during games when you know you're going first. You know, take out the hand traps for cards like that. And there's just a lot of things that you can mess around with with this deck. But so, anyway, like, comment, subscribe, do all that nonsense that you usually do. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below of why I'm not playing certain card. Um, if I haven't already addressed it in the video, I will give you a response. If I have addressed it, I will tell you, listen here, Buster. Listen here, Busterino. At this timestamp, I discussed that exact very point that you're asking about. But anyway, if you want to subscribe to the channel, I'd love to welcome you on board. If you're enjoying the content, if you'd like to see more, subscribe if you are new here and haven't already. Like the video if you want to see more stuff like this. I've got some other deck profiles I want to pump out. And like I said... Twitch link and Discord links are in the description down below if you feel so inclined to use them. But other than that, as I've already said, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys. And take care. I'll see you in the next video.